Hello and welcome to another course on Oracle Analytics. We are so excited to share with you advanced technologies and machine learning features that Oracle Analytics provides in the data visualization product that enhance users' productivity tremendously. Before we jump into the content, what we are going to learn, let me just share with you why you should be excited about learning for great opportunities out there in the market. From a business perspective, Oracle Analytics business is showing almost 90% growth year over year. Almost 30% of customers are new to Oracle, which means that Oracle Analytics is showing a lot of excitement and interest in a customer basis. What it translates to is that there are already more than 5 million active monthly users of Oracle Analytics. Analytics Cloud is one of the fastest growing cloud product from Oracle. What this data represents is a tremendous opportunity for you to participate in a growing community of Oracle Analytics users. Let me share with you how can you learn about these technologies through set of UDB courses. We have released earlier a concept and fundamental course called Modern Data Visualization with Oracle Analytics. If you have not taken this course, I would recommend to look at at least first couple of sections to get familiar with the concept of augmented analytics setup as well as building some basic data visualization project. This particular course is extension to some of the concept but also enabling you to learn some new component like data flow as well as machine learning framework. Let me share with you what exactly you are going to learn in this course. Each section in this course is designed with real-world business use cases as an example to understand the concept as well as to perform your assignment for that section. You will gain understanding on key concept of modern analytics technologies by examining third wave of analytics innovation that drives a lot of automation into data visualization technologies. You will learn and explore connectivity to different kind of data sources like database, cloud applications, file systems to bring multiple data sets into data visualization environment. Once you have the data sets from various environment, you will gain a deep understanding of data flow capabilities that allows you to blend multiple data sets and apply comprehensive functions on those data sets such as aggregation, selection, sentiment analysis, building and applying machine learning models to generate target data sets that you want to leverage for data visualization. You will be practicing and understanding one-click advanced analytics functions to create clusters, regressions, outliers and modern data visualization charting components you will be performing predictive analysis such as creating a forecast or trend line and even sentiment analysis on given set of data. You will have fun and exciting time learning about machine learning framework built into data visualization. You will gain understanding of working with correlation matrix or picto charts as well as build and apply machine learning models on a given data set to do a predictive analytics. And towards the end of the course, we will summarize the top 10 features that are definitely worth knowing about Oracle Analytics which allows you to improve the productivity by leveraging augmented capabilities. And we will explore some of those features recently built a Gartner Bake Off projects based on loneliness data and that would be your bonus projects to take away. I'm sure by now you must be very excited to learn this concept and apply that into data visualization framework. So make sure to enroll and start learning now. Hi, I'm Jignesh Mehta, your instructor for this course along with the co-instructor Subrata Datta. We are so happy to have you in this course. Let's start learning. In this lecture, I will go over some of the key learning outcome from this course. You can always look at the detailed course description on a course landing page, but I want to rather focus on the learning outcome that you should expect from each section. First section will enable you to grasp key understanding and concept behind analytics innovation, specifically third generation of innovation that drives a lot of automation features in an analytical platform. After completing section 2, you should be able to connect to a different types of data sources such as database, SBase, SaaS applications to select the data set for your data visualization projects. You should be able to manage the data set and understand the concept of data set and data source. 
after completing section 3 you should have a very comprehensive understanding of set of features available to you as a developer or analyst users to blend multiple data sets and apply sophisticated functions such as aggregation branching creating and applying models and different analysis on a data sets to create required targeted data set for visualization Section 4 will enable you to apply advanced analytics functions very quickly. On a given data set and visualization, you should be able to create trend-lined clusters and outlier very quickly as well as be able to create a forecast right within the visualization environment. Taking advanced analytics concept further into a section 5 which allows you to create machine learning models right within the data visualization framework. By completing section 5, you will have a good understanding of different machine learning algorithms available within Oracle Analytics framework, how to create models on a given data set using data flow capability as well as apply those models on a data to generate predictive analytics. You will gain understanding of how to interpret model, how to understand the scores and efficiency of the model and compare model to determine the right model that works for your specific business use case. The section 6 will summarize the top 10 features of Oracle Analytics that's worth knowing and absolutely a valuable takeaway from this course. We will highlight some of these features into a recently built Gartner back of projects of 2019 based on loneliness data to understand what factors might be causing or might be related to a loneliness. We'll be very delighted to share that project with you and also will be interested to find out what you think think or what you discovered from your own experiment with those data. I highly recommend that you perform the assignment for the given section as well as explore the bonus projects and additional demos and examples using the resource file shared for each section. Thank you for attending this lecture. We'll see you in the next one. In this lecture, let's examine all the resources you have available for this course. This course is supplemented with lots of business use cases as an assignment as well as bonus project. Each section will have its own resource PDF that explains you how to perform the assignment as well as all the needed data sets for that particular assignment. We will also provide a solutions for the assignment. There are lots of additional demos and example that we will share with you in the resource folder. Each section will have its own resource folder as well as we will bundle all the resources as a single resource file as a resource for the first introduction section. As I mentioned earlier, it, I highly recommend that if you have not taken the first course Modern Data Visualization with Oracle Analytics, feel free to participate in that course as well and at least look at first couple of sections to understand concept, set up as well as perform some data visualization projects to get familiar with the navigation and Oracle Analytics environment. We'll see you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome to this lecture. This lecture provides you a key understanding of innovation trends in analytics domain. Different organizations and departments within organization would have different kinds of analytics need. Those different needs will define analytics strategy for that organization. Those strategies are typically built on the understanding that organization have a mix of needs. Analytics was initially focused on a more centralized model which included a business layer which provided a strong governance and a single source of truth typically known as a semantic layer based platform it's a strong relationship between metadata and data are defined based on a business requirement and the reports and analysis are defined and designed based on that semantic layer but over the time it was realized that user also needed a greater freedom to explore data allowing them to gain new insights and perform greater data discovery. This was the second wave of innovation commonly known as a self-service data visualization and exploration environment. This trend defined a visual based data discovery platform. This second wave of innovation provided a much agile analytics environment where semantic model was taking a long time self-service and agile data discovery environment can provide analysis within days and hours. 
and now it is about getting even greater insights and making analytics even more pervasive using power of machine learning and AI to simplify data preparation and data analysis to help you discover even deeper insights. This is a automation and augmented driven data visualization environment typically known as a third wave of innovation. Some analyst or some company will call it as third generation of analytics innovation but ultimately it is an era of AI ML driven augmentation and automated way of generating data visualization to improve the productivity and efficiency for business users. It is also about removing even more of the traditional IT and business user bottleneck by making the business more agile. But we realize that organization needs are all three waves. As this new wave of innovation enables to empower analytics domain, the organizational needs are growing, not replacing the old requirement and these waves are not mutually exclusive and the augmented analytics needs to be at the core of organization to be fully insight driven. Oracle Analytics Cloud Platform is designed to provide the capabilities across the innovation trend. Having on the forefront of third wave of analytics innovation, Oracle Analytics Cloud provides augmented analytics capability and leading the market in the cloud deployment. Let's look at this trend into a actual components that organizations and departments usually need. If you look at the typical analytics environment, main requirement of any analytical environment is connect to all kind of data sources from the centralized and semantic model driven uh, analytics needs are dashboard pixel perfect reporting environment excel integration the building metadata model as a semantic model that drives the reports and dashboard design and very sophisticated role based access control and query federation capabilities self service analytics innovation needs to be supplemented with capabilities around data preparation capability a full scale data visualization storytelling, sharing and collaborating your data discovery as well as allowing user to do what if analysis and to be able to consume on a different kinds of mobile and desktop devices. Taking the third wave of innovation as its augmented capabilities, the analytics platform needs to supplement additional capabilities such as machine learning driven data enrichment, natural language query and natural language generation out of the data, voice and chatbot integration for analytics insights one click explain to understand data and generate machine learning driven insights on the data as well as visually building machine learning models and apply those models right onto the data set to build predictive analytics. We have designed a couple of Udemy courses to really enable you with self-service and augmented analytics capability. The first course that I mentioned earlier, Modern Data Visualization with Oracle Analytics is really focusing on a basic concept and component around data visualization, storytelling, sharing as well as machine learning driven data enrichment and natural language query processing. In this particular course, which is augmented analytics with machine learning, is taking learning and extending the capabilities of those components, but also allowing you to learn more deeper into data flow based data preparation and data blending, machine learning model, as well as natural language query and natural language generation. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good understanding of not just innovation trend in analytics and warm. Thank you for listening to this lecture. We'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will go over setup of your Oracle Analytics environment on your desktop. In this course, we will leverage the desktop edition. It is available on Windows and Mac platform and this particular course is based on version 12.2.5.2.0 which is recently released in April 2019. In this lecture, we will go over the actual demo of setting up the data visualization environment if you haven't done so. If you have taken the previous course on Oracle Analytics and have done data visualization and desktop installation already, you might want to upgrade it to 12.2.5.2 version. A desktop version comes with the advanced analytics framework as well as machine learning framework and it's very quick and easy to set up on your desktop. If you wish you can also take an advantage of $300 credit on Oracle Cloud account to leverage analytics and other cloud services to explore and learn more about those service features. Let's review the setup process in the demo.
As a part of your first assignment, you are going to set up data visualization on your desktop. I'm going to show you an installation process using Mac OS as an example, but you will also find under resource section a assignment document that will help you and guide you through the installation on Windows platform. So let's get started. The very easy way to get to the download is simply typing Oracle Data Visualization Desktop in a search. You will find a couple of links that pops up and you want to click on a data visualization desktop download link. Once you are on this download page, you can scroll down and look at system requirement information. It highlights that if you are planning to install it on a Mac, you need to uninstall previous version of data visualization. If you happen to have installed, install the new one as a fresh installation. For Windows user, usually you can upgrade the previous version. Once you click on a download link, it will take you to the login page where you would need Oracle technology account to access the software that you need to download. If you do not have account with Oracle already, you can always go and create a new account. Once you log into Oracle technology account, it will take you to the data visualization download page where you will be able to select whether you want to install it on Mac OS or Windows platform. In this demonstration, I'm going to use Mac OS as an example but under resource section, you can always find a document that will help you guide through the Windows installation process as well. So let's select Mac OS for now. Once I select and continue, it will ask you to make sure that you agree to the license agreement. This download is usually for learning and demo purpose and it's not production use. So it's just a standard agreement now you are on the actual download page. Depending on your browser settings, you may already see the file started to download. In case it doesn't start, you can always click on a download button here or click on the file name here, it will start downloading. Once it completes the download, we'll go and start the installation process. Once the file is downloaded, I'm simply going to double click on the download file. On the Mac, it will start the package installation process continue through it make sure you allow all the users to use it uh, to install this package click on install and it will start installing software for you package installation is complete you will see oracle data visualization under your application you will also see configure python just double click on it this will help us install machine learning and advanced analytics framework to consume within our oracle data visualization desktop by double clicking Oracle Data Visualization Configure Python, it will open up a terminal window as well as it will open up an installation window that will help us guide through the framework installation. Click through continue on a framework installation. It want to make sure that you are running it as an administrator. So it may ask you for administrator privileges, provide that and continue. Once the installation is completed, you can find Oracle Data Visualization Desktop under your application area. So let's go ahead and double click on Oracle Data Visualization Desktop. Once the Oracle Data Visualization Desktop comes up, uh, you'll be able to see home page of Oracle Analytics. On a desktop edition, the data visualization comes up with a sample project. So this could be another validation that your setup was completed and your application is ready to work with. The one easy way to find the default project is simply clicking on this burger icon where we have many consoles. One of them is a project and you'll be able to see there is a sample project available to explore. This completes our validation of data visualization installation. We can always go back to home page and learn more about data visualization starting next section. Hope you can follow the assignment for these sections to make sure you have your data visualization environment set up either on Windows or Mac OS, leverage resource document or revisit this video to set up your environment. We'll see you in the next section. Welcome to section two. In this section, we will learn about creating data sets from different data sources. Let's discuss the contents of this section. We will introduce ourselves to the available out of the box connectors to different data sources. However, for the purpose of this section, we will learn to create connections to some important data sources like files, Oracle database, Oracle SBase, Big Data, Oracle SaaS applications, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse, and Snowflake. You will also learn to manage data sets and data connections. In any enterprise, 
data is often spread across multiple sources. Oracle Analytics allows business users to connect to multiple data sources, allowing data federation. There are over 50 plus data connectors available in OAC. You can use them to connect to various data sources. Import the data as a data set before you can visualize them. Sample data sources include files, application connectors, Spark, Hive, Autonomous Data Warehouse, Autonomous Transaction Processing, Oracle Database, Non-Oracle Databases, SBase Applications, Oracle Storage Cloud, Generic JDBC and ODBC connectors are also available. As discussed earlier in the agenda, we will cover some of the out-of-box connectors and learn about its connection properties as we go through the lectures. Thanks for watching. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we shall explore the available list of out-of-box connectors in OAC and also create a data set from a file. Creating a data set in DV is often the first step to start analyzing your data. If the data is available as an XLS, CSV or TXT file, then it can be directly imported in DV as a data set. However, if the data required for analysis is say in an Oracle DB or Oracle SAS application, then one has to first create a connection. After connection is created, an analyst can bring in the data as a data set before he can create a visualization project. To create connections, Oracle Analytics provides business users the capability to connect to multiple data sources without waiting on any IT resources. It provides secure access to data. Each of the supported data sources has a unique connector. Each connector has its own set of parameters which the users have to provide. For example, an Oracle DBAS connector requires host IP, port number and service name parameters, while a SAS connector requires the OTBI URL. Most connectors also require the user ID and password for a secure connection. These connections that are created are reusable. Once the connection to the source is securely established, the user can get the required data and store the same as a data set. Let's understand the steps. Step 1 is to create a connection. Step 2 is to create a data set from the connection. Step 3 create a visual project from the data set. Before we go to other lectures for this topic, where we will cover in detail some of the out of box connectors, let's have a quick look where we can find the connectors and also see how we could create a data set from a file. Let's start our demo. Let's begin on the home page. Here we will explore the various out of the box connectors that are available. To have a look, let's click create and select connections. A dialog box appears with a list of connectors that you can use to create connections to various data sources, connections for Oracle applications, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse, Oracle Database. Let's scroll down, we see Apache Hive, MS Access, Spark, etc. You can use the generic ODBC JDBC connectors to connect to the data sources which are not listed in the connections dialog box. You have seen where to access this out of the box connectors. Click cancel to go back to the home page. You will now see how to import flat files as data sets and build visualizations on the file based data sets. To import file based data sets, click create data set. On the create data set dialog box, click on the upload file icon and browse to the folder on your local computer where you have the file. Select the file and click open. The file opens up in the data preparation area. Here you could change certain properties of the columns before bring it in, bringing it in as a dataset. However, here we will click on add 
and bring it in as a data set. The data set, the data set is now available for further preparation and transformation if required using the augmented data preparation capabilities as seen in an earlier course. However, we will start to use this data set as a project for a project as is. Let's click create project. A data visualization pane is opened. From the available columns on your left, let's select multiple columns using control key. We select customer segment, say product category and sales. Right click and choose create best visualization. A visualization is built based on the newly imported file based data set. At this stage you may choose to save the project. In this lecture you have seen how to access the out of the box connectors and also seen how to create a data set from a file before you use it for any visualization. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you learn to create a connection to an Oracle database as a service and extract a data set for building a visualization project. Let's get the data out from the most common data store, the Oracle database on the cloud. Many business enterprises are relying on Oracle to build their data marts. Data marts accelerate business processes by securely storing data applicable to the business areas. Analysts often use such databases to fetch their data for creating business insights. Most often, business users need a quick access to this data for exploratory analysis. Besides Oracle Database, Oracle Analytics provides generic JDBC and ODBC connections to databases that aren't listed with the default connection types. You can use the connectors to access databases that support ODBC JDBC connections. In the following demo, you will create your first connection to a Oracle database to extract data and leverage the data set for analysis. Let's start the demo. Let's start from the home page. You can create connections to the data sources using the create button on the top right. Click create and select connections. A new window for create connection appears. From the available connections, type click or rather click on Oracle database connector. A dialog box appears. You would need to enter the mandatory details to connect. Let's enter a logical name for the connection. Provide, provide a host IP. connection port, give it a username, a password and a service name. Let's click save. Once the connection is saved, you should be able to find it on the connections tab. Let's go to the home page and back to our data tab. We give it some moment to refresh. Once the connection tab is refreshed, you will see our existing connection. You can manage the connection right from this action menu out here. As discussed earlier, the first step is to create a connection and the second step is to create a data set. I could now create a data set right from the connection tab through the action menu or, or I could also go back to the create button and create a data set. In this case, I am going back to the create button and creating a data set. From the available connections that were created now and earlier, we can see a list of connections already pre-created, right? So what we do now is we create, we click our latest connection that we created to further go ahead and extract data. So we use our, we use our existing connection. Here we are presented with two options after we connect. One is the select column option 
and the second is the select SQL option, enter SQL option. Right? We can also enter our own SQL. However, for the purpose of this demo, we will continue with the select column option. From the available list of tables, I select the BICS revenue underscore FT2 table. All the columns in this table are available to select. You can choose to add all, to add all the columns or select a set of columns from the available column and click add selected to add the columns to the data set. In the present case, you will select add all. You can provide a different name for the data set if required. Click add to add the data set. The data set is now being saved in our environment. The data set now opens up in the preparation, data preparation pane. You can use the preparation pane to prepare the data if required. In this case, click on create project at the top right to build visualizations right away. Let's say you want to analyze revenue by country and customer segment. From the data pane, while keeping the control key selected, select the three columns, country name, customer segment, and revenue. You could drag these three columns onto the canvas to build your visualization. You see a visualization chart has been created. You could now play around with this visualization or add additional canvases or visualizations to the canvas if required. At this stage, you could save this project if required. In this lecture, you have seen how to connect to an Oracle database as a service, extract the data set from the DB and build a visualization. You could also use the same connector to connect to an on-premise DB if required. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you learn to create a connection to an Oracle SBase instance and extract a data set for building a visualization project. Oracle Analytics is now your single platform to visualize data in both relational and multidimensional database. Most often, business users need better visualization and storytelling capabilities over and above the capabilities provided by native tools like SmartView available with SBase. Capability to federate across multi-source and the ability to storytell in Oracle Analytics makes Oracle Analytics the best platform to visualize your SBase data. Let's start with a demo. We start in the home page of Oracle Analytics. To create a connection to SBase, let's click on Create Connections. A new dialog box opens. From the available out of the box connectors, let's select Oracle SBase. In the dialog box, let's provide the mandatory details like a logical connection name, the DSN, the user ID, and the password. Let's click Save. A connection is created. Let's go and check the connection. From the home page, let's click Navigator, Data, and come to the Connections tab. Here we should see our newly created SBase connection. From the Action menu, I could choose to now create a data set. Let's click Create Data Set. All the available cubes are now shown in the selection. I select the cube to which I want, from which I want to extract data. I select my cube and click Add. The cube gets added on to my data set. Let me click the back icon here. 
So just to summarize, we did follow two steps. We first created a connection. We saw the connection in our connection tab. And from that connection, we leveraged it to create a data set. So let me go to the data sets tab on my left. And the new cube that I extracted is now available for analysis. Again, I choose the action menu on the right corner and click this to create my analysis project on the cube. So I create a project, the entire cube is available. Now I click on the spend folder, select the amount spend, and let's say I click on time, calendar, and I click on quarter. It gives me my spend by quarter. A quick line graph is presented out to us. We could save this project. However, in this case, I will choose not to save the project. In this lecture, we learn to create a connection to an Oracle SBase instance, leverage the connection to create a database, and then uh, to create a data set, and then use the data set to create our project. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you learn to create a connection to a big data instance and extract a data set for building a visualization project. Unlocking the hidden value in big data and that too quickly is one of the biggest challenges. One of the typical bottlenecks in achieving success with big data is availability of resources. What if businesses could give the power to its users to start exploring this data and not wait on high cost and scarce IT resources like the data scientists. Oracle Analytics gives business users the power to test their business hypothesis. To do this, users have tools in Oracle Analytics to connect, extract, transform, and prepare their data before getting onto analysis. Oracle Analytics provides a host of connectors to big data data management systems. For the purpose of this demo, we will connect to Spark, one of the most common big data systems. In the demo, we will create a connection and leverage the connection to create a dataset. We will skip the step of creating visual from the dataset as this process of creating a project remains the same for all datasets and we have seen it multiple times. Let's start a demo. We begin from our analytics homepage. On the top right, let's click create connections and from the available out of the box connectors, we will now select Spark. We give a logical connection name, a host, a connection port, a username, and a password. After this information, we will save the connection. Once we save this connection, this connection will be available in the connection tab to leverage the connection to create a data set. We now leverage the data connection to create our data set. We now connect to the local, uh, to the Spark machine. And from the available schemas in Spark, we select the default schema and a related table called state geographies. This state geographies, we add all the columns, we get a preview of data. Once we are satisfied with the data, we may change the name of the data set to state demographic, spark and click add. This now helps create the data set in our analytics environment. This data set can now be leveraged to create a project. In this lecture, we learned how to create a Spark connection and leverage the Spark connection to create a data set. This data set typically can be leveraged to create a project. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn to use the Oracle Applications Connector to connect to Oracle SaaS applications and OBIE applications. Oracle Analytics allows business users the capability to extend 
your Oracle SaaS applications data with your various other enterprise data that you need for exploring hidden relationships. Example, you may need to analyze data for growing trend in attrition coming from your HCM with impact on recruitment and training costs coming from your financials. Oracle Fusion Applications Integration takes place with the OTBI or the Oracle Transaction Business Intelligence layer of the Fusion application. After you create a connection, you can access and use subject areas and analysis as datasets for your projects. Oracle SaaS applications that you can connect to are Sales, Financials, HCM, Supply Chain, Procurement, Project and Loyalty. You can also use Oracle Applications Connector to connect to your on-premise OBIE deployments and other Oracle Analytics Cloud service. This allows users to leverage other BI applications for building integrated visualization projects. Let's have a look at the Oracle Applications Connector. Let's start with our demo. We begin with our home page. Let's click Create. To create our connection, click on Connections. As usual, we are presented with a list of out-of-the-box connectors. Let's select Oracle Applications Connector this time. Give it a logical name. Here, I am trying to connect to my HCM application. I give it a logical name. I give the host URL. I enter the username. And the password. After I have entered the password, I click save. It creates a connection. I, I will now be able to find my connections in the connections tab. So moving to the connections tab, I see my connector that I created available for me to leverage. I now leverage this connection to create a data set. I click create data set. Here I am presented with three options. Essentially, the connector has helped me integrate with the OTBI layer of the HCM application. So all the subject areas that were available to me, or rather to the user ID that I provided, is now available for me to leverage. I could select columns from the available subject areas, or I could also enter a logical SQL against the subject areas to fetch my columns that I require in my dataset. In this example, I will select an analysis, a pre-created analysis that is available in the OTBI layer of my application. Essentially, I go through the catalog to the desired folder where I have my uh, analysis. I select my analysis. I could get the preview of the data for the analysis, the columns that are available. I am satisfied with the columns that I wanted. I can change the name of the data set at this stage if required and go and click add. This helps me add the data set into my OAC environment. I will go back to my data sets tab and this data set that I right now created with my connector is again available to create a visualization project. I leverage the data set to create a project. I select the required columns and I now have a visualization that talks about the average credit rating across business units. At this stage, I could add more visualizations. I could say uh, onto the canvas. I could save this project uh, for further analysis. Uh, however, for the purpose of this demo, we are restricting, it, restricting our demo just to show how we could connect to our HCM which are the various ways to connect to the uh, HCM uh, OTBI layer, essentially the subject area, the analysis or logical SQL, get in your columns through a data set and then leverage your data. You are now, you can also blend this data with any other data 
and create your uh, analysis for exploratory uh, and investigative analysis. I will now move to show you how we could leverage the same connector for connecting with a OBIE application. So I again go back to my create button. I click on connections and this time around again I use the same connector Oracle applications connector again to connect to my on-premise OBIE instance. Again I give a logical name. A host name, I enter a username and a password. I click save. The connection gets created successfully. I should be able to see the connections in my connections tab. So that's the connector I just created. I could again leverage this connector to create a data set. I click on data set. And just as the last time around, what you saw was the three options. The same three options are again available. Essentially, I can connect to any of my subject areas that are available. Select my columns. For this case, I will now select a subject area of my choice. I search for the subject area. I select the required columns from this subject area. And quickly I will change the name if required. I could go on to choose the columns I want I, just for the purpose of brevity. I am selecting the three columns and I click add. The data set gets added. The demo loyalty fact data set. Once the data set is added, I can click on the back icon. And again, this data set would be available under the data sets tab. I could again quickly create a small project out of this data set. I could use it across multiple data sets. Blend data. The idea here is to show you a quick visualization from the available data set. So we basically again finish the three steps. Essentially, create a connection first. Leverage the connection to create a data set and then leverage the data set to create a report. At this stage, I will choose to save it, save this uh, project. However, for the purpose of this demo, I leave this demo at this stage. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn how to connect to Oracle's autonomous data warehouse using the out of the box connectors. Oracle's Autonomous Data Warehouse is a self-tuning performant database that resides on an optimized hardware on the Oracle's cloud. Autonomous Data Warehouse gets you the speed to deploy your enterprise warehouse. Oracle Analytics helps business users realize business value from the data stored in the warehouse almost immediately by connecting to Autonomous Data Warehouse through the available connector. Oracle Analytics helps businesses build an integrated cloud solution with both the data management and the analytics layer on a scalable cloud platform. Easy to use extensible and advanced statistics and ML functions makes Oracle Analytics an ideal partner with Autonomous Data Warehouse. After you create a connection, you can access the available schema and extract relevant data as a data set for your projects. Apart from immediate visualization on your warehouse data, you can use this feature to blend data from warehouse and external data from any source to create your self-service discovery-based analytics. In the following demo, you will quickly learn to create a connection and create a data set for further analysis. Let's start. In this demo, we will create a connection to Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. You will click the Create button. Select connection. This will present to you all the available out of the box connection types. 
select Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. Give it. Give the connection a logical name. For the client credentials, select the wallet file that your database administrator would have provided to you to ensure a secure connection. From the available service name drop down, select the appropriate service name you want to connect to. You will also need to provide a username and password as mandatory fields to create this connection. Type in your username, your password, and click Save. After you hit the Save button, the connection will now be available to you. You can create a dataset. To create this dataset, you will use the connection we just created. From the available connections, Select the recently created connection. Schema authorized in warehouse is now available. Choose the appropriate schema, the table to extract your data. Choose the columns. In this case, we will add all the columns. Take a preview. You can also change the name of the dataset for a business friendly dataset name and click add to get the dataset in your analytics environment we can further use this dataset for any visualization project in this demo you learned how to create a connection to an oracle analytics data warehouse cloud to summarize oracle analytics provides business users the capability to connect to any data anywhere and start an exploratory analytics all in a self service environment. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn how to connect to a Snowflake data warehouse using out of the box connector. Oracle Analytics helps analysts realize business value from the data stored in Snowflake data warehouse almost immediately by connecting to it through the out of the box connectors. Ease of use and integration with Non-Oracle cloud data management providers make Oracle Analytics a must-have platform to leverage data warehouse investments. Oracle Analytics helps integrate your cloud solutions across Oracle and non-Oracle offerings. After you create a connection, you can access the available schema and extract relevant data as a dataset for your visualization projects. Let's see how we use out-of-the-box connector for Snowflake Data Warehouse. Let's start. In this demo, we will create a connection to a Snowflake Data Warehouse. Start with Create Connections. This will present all the available connection types. Choose Snowflake Data Warehouse. Provide the mandatory details like a logical connection name, host, credentials, database name, a warehouse name you want to connect to. After providing the information, let's click Save. A connection is created. Next, we create a dataset using the recently created connection. Directly select tables from the schema you have access to in Snowflake or we use a custom SQL in this case. Get a preview of a data. We see a warning. Let's provide an alias as required. Get a preview of data. Change the column property from an attribute to a measure and save the data set. We can further use this data set for creating visualization projects. In this demo, you learned how to create a connection to a Snowflake data warehouse, use the connection to create a data set and then leverage the data set for creating visualization projects. To summarize, Oracle Analytics provides business users the capability to connect to any data anywhere and start an exploratory analytics in a self-service environment. Thanks for watching. Welcome to this lecture. In the previous lectures, you learned to create connection using the out-of-the-box connectors. In this lecture, you will learn to manage the datasets and connections that you created. 
Let's jump straight into the demo. From the home page, use the navigator, then data tab. You will find the list of datasets under datasets tab. Let's explore the various options available to manage the dataset. We will select the action menu available on the right of the row. Create project will create visualizations on the dataset. Open will open the dataset in a data preparatory mode. Reload data will connect to the source location from which the dataset has been created and will refresh the data. We'll duplicate the file. You could use this feature if you want to use the dataset for a separate project with modifications to the dataset. Such modifications could be done in the preparatory mode. Delete will delete the file from the storage container. Inspect will help you view the properties of dataset. The general tab gives you information when the dataset was created, modified, the type of dataset, whether it is a SQL query, a logical SQL, an analysis, a file, etc. It also gives information on the connection that was used to create the dataset. The data elements tab gives you information on the column names, the data type, whether the column is an attribute or measure. In Oracle Analytics, we can specify the permissions on a dataset using Access tab. Also, the Search tab is used to index your dataset for searching. It helps you make your dataset searchable in a BI ask. The Access and Search tabs are available only in Oracle Analytics. You will not see them in your data visualization desktop environment. Click Connections to manage the connections you have created using out-of-the-box connectors. We will select the Actions menu, available at the right of the row. Create Dataset will allow you to create dataset using the connection. Delete will delete the connection. Inspect will show you the properties of the connection. It will show you all the connection parameters you entered for creating the connection like host, port, username. It will not show you the password, that is to maintain the security. In Oracle Analytics, you can specify the permissions of the connection object using Access tab. The Access tab is available only in Oracle Analytics. You will not see them in your DVD environment. You can click close to come back to your data tab. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the section. In this section, you will learn about an advanced topic that is data flow. How we leverage data flow in Oracle Analytics. Let's discuss the contents of this section. You will be introduced to data flow. You will be given a project to create your first data flow. You will learn to execute and manage your data flow. Advanced features of data flow that includes creating of multiple target outputs, sequencing of multiple data flows, and storing curated data output to a database will also be covered. You will also see how data flow is used for sentiment analysis. In the end, we'll leave you with some hands-on lab and demos. You could take a quick quiz at the end of this section. To begin, what is data flow? It is a lightweight, easy to use tool that allows business users to transform data. It starts off with a source data set on which the analyst could run some transformation and create an output data set. This target data set could form part of an analysis or could be stored back to a relational database or SBase for any downstream processing. Dataflow forms an integral part of training an application of machine learning models. We will cover this in a separate section. Dataflow is an important enabler of self-service analytics environment. As a part of learning Dataflow, we will discuss a use case, a typical analytical requirement. And as we fulfill the requirement, we will learn this feature that Oracle Analytics has to offer. As part of this project, you are required to analyze donations across schools and cities in US. As part of this analytic requirement, you have to extend your analytics by demographics of a location. However, this information, as in most real-life cases, is available in separate datasets. You will need to combine data 
and to do this you will use the data flow capabilities beyond creation of a combined target data set you will also learn to move data between two relational sources and also leverage data flow for sentiment analysis with this brief introduction of data flow and agenda let's start with our lectures in this section thanks for watching welcome to the lecture here you learn to create your first data flow businesses are generally presented with raw data set that needs some amount of transformation data flow helps you keep source data set unchanged and create a new project specific output common actions or steps to be performed in a typical data flow are applying filters it basically helps to limit the amount of data to be included example eliminate records with null value add column step helps include data required for analysis example use existing date columns to extract relevant data say a year add column step also helps create new measures example margins from sales and cost of goods sold data add data step helps extend the dimensionality or facts of existing data example extend demographic details of city or state attribute select column step helps focus on relevant attributes of data example if the focus on customer information if the focus is on customer information you may want to remove product attributes from a particular project aggregate data step helps create summary data as against detailed data rename column step helps give business meaning to metadata example invoice value to to be renamed to sales or revenue you will use these steps as you create your first data flow let's start with the demo before we start the demo let's open and review the data set in this case the donation example data set the data set we have is good for an analysis of donations by various attributes like school subjects project state etc however if you want to extend the analysis by the state demographics like income and population the same data is not available in this data set let's also open and review the data set zip stats this data set has the required demographics information you are looking for to extend your analysis with so let's use the data flow features to combine the two files and solve this business problem from the home screen we click create and add a data flow a data flow always begins with a data set this data set could be an existing data set in your environment in this case you will choose to create a new data set on the add data set window click on create data set you could choose to leverage an established connection to extract your data or load a data file in this case we will lead we will load a data file let's click upload icon browse to the local machine folder where you have your file select donation examples and click open you click on add to bring the file in as a data set and add it to the data flow a step in the data flow is already added you could choose to make the selection of data set dynamic by setting up a prompt which will be invoked while the data set is run or executed at this stage you browse through the columns that is added towards the end you will see a date completed column this has some null values you decide to do away with these records you add a step by clicking on the plus icon and select filter click on the menu available in the step editor click add expression filter in the label enter my date filter and the expression enter date completed is not null
let's validate this expression and apply. With this, you get all your relevant records. Again, click on the plus icon and select add columns. For the column name, enter school state. In the editor, we enter substring We select the column SCH underscore state zip. From 1 until 2. Essentially, we had a column which has both the zip code and the state code and we want to separate the two out. I click on validate. Then apply. We need to add two more columns. Let's add the next column. In the column name, we enter school zip. We again add a substring. Use the same column SCH underscore state zip. This time from fourth character until the end. So we delete the part. However, this substring we need to cast it as a character since we will be using it later as a join. So let's write cast the substring as character. We validate the expression, click apply. Again, click another column that we require. Enter a name, year completed. In this, we will show a feature how we can extract a component from a date. So we say year, the expression builder helps us through the process and the column name we say date completed. We click validate, apply. We have want to add our next data set so that we can combine the two data. So we again click on plus, add data. We go to our zip file, create data set. Select the zip file. Open. You will see the first column, the zip code which has come out as an attribute. And this will be matched with our school zip column that we created earlier. Let's add the data set. A join step is added automatically the moment you added a new data set. In the keep rows, for input 1, we will select all rows. For input 2, we will say all matching rows. In the match column, we will ensure that from the first input file, it is school zip. The operator is equal to. And the second input file, it is zip. Next click on the plus icon and add a step to the data flow. From the menu, choose select columns. All columns are selected by default. On your right, click remove all. From your left, select the following columns, keeping your control key pressed. Project ID, school ID. Primary focus subject, resource type, poverty level, grade level, student reached, total donations, number of donors, school state, year completed, median, 
population. After selecting this, you could scroll up and click Add Selected. After selecting our data, we need to aggregate this data. So we again click on the plus icon to add a step to the data flow. From the menu, we select Aggregate. We are presented with our columns. All the measure columns are on our left side, which is being aggregated, and all the attribute columns typically are coming on the right side for group by. From the aggregate, let's remove the year completed column. This column will now be available under the groups. So we go on to the groups. From the below icon, select plus. Add a group, select our column, the recently, what we shifted from aggregate, which is year completed. Similarly, from the group by column, we remove the project ID. This will now be available under the add aggregates column. We select the project ID and we want to put it as count. For all the other measures, we will change our functions from sum to average. And also the new column names, we will keep the default names. The system suggests us an appropriate name we could rename it to any business relevant name. We could now again add another data step. Select on the plus icon. Select rename data. Rename columns. We are now presented the option to rename our source columns. So we choose to rename our project ID as number of projects. And also choose to rename the median column to income. It was the median income for the zip code. So we have completed our uh, data flow, most of the transformations that we needed to do. Now we will save the resultant data set into, or rather a resultant output into a data set. So we again click on the last step. We say save data. And this data, we could save it as a data set. So we name the data set as donation by school. We also have the option to save the data set into a relational store. We will see this later uh, in our later lecture how to uh, achieve that. Right? For now, we will save this as a data set. We now go ahead and save the data flow. Enter a valid name. and click OK. Once the data flow is saved, we go and click, click back on the navigator, select data. In your data flow tab, you should see your recently created data flow. You have successfully created your first data flow. In summary, you combined two files selected relevant columns, aggregated the data, and defined a target data set in this data flow. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Having created your data flow in the earlier lecture, let's now understand 
how you could run and manage the data flow object. Remember, when you created your data flow, you just defined the target output. The target output is not created unless you run or execute your data flow. You can now run your data flow as and when required or schedule the run with a desired frequency. Note that scheduling is available in Oracle Analytics Cloud and not on a desktop environment. You can delete, copy your data flow objects, you can migrate your data flows if required between environments. Let's execute the data flow we created earlier and see some of these features in a demo. If you are not on your data flows tab, you could navigate to the data flow tab from home, navigator, data, data flows. However, in this case, we are already in our data flow tab. From the action menu available for each data flow, you could perform various actions. Let's click run to execute this data flow. The data flow is now running. Once the run is completed, as indicated, move to the data sets tab. There you will now find the target data set, the one that is created after the run. From the actions menu of the data set, you could create a project, a visualization project. Let's come back to the data flow. Again, from the action menu, let's inspect your data flow. Here you will find the general info tab. The sources and the targets of this data flow are also available. Note this is shown only after the first run is completed and hence we actually ran the data flow first and then I brought you to the inspect. It now shows you what were the source files that it used and what target it created. Let's click close. Back on the data flows tab from our action menu we could also delete this uh, data flow if we want to create a copy of this data flow we could always open and save the data flow as in a different name to schedule a data flow in your oracle analytics environment on the cloud you will also have a menu option called new schedule however as said, this is not available on your DVD environment and only available on your Oracle Cloud environment. Let's quickly create a project on the data set we created. Let's go to the data sets tab, select the data set donation by school from the menu, create project. The data set that we required is now available. On the left, on the data pane, you will see the blended data, right? You will see columns such as income and population, the demographic data also available. Let's select school state, total donation and population while keeping our control key pressed. Right click and select create best visualization. A scatter diagram is created. We could see the various plots. One such plot shows us the donation and the population of New York State. You could create other visuals as required and create a complete project from this data set. At this stage, you choose to save the project, click save, give the project a name, donations by school and click save. In this lecture, you learned to manage your data flow, run your data flow, and access the target data set. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn of an advanced feature. You will leverage a single data flow to create multiple outputs. Typically, you need multiple files either to meet varied analytical requirements or meet the needs of different functional user groups. Often, a large data set with multiple attributes can be leveraged for analysis by various groups. Example, a marketing team may want to do brand analysis, whereas the SCM team may want to do a regional analysis. In such a case, the data after due transformations can be branched and separate outputs for separate groups can be created. 
Note, you can have minimum 5 number of connections or outputs for a branch. In our earlier lecture, you created an output file. You will leverage the same output file to create a new data flow giving multiple outputs. One for donation by subjects and other for donation by geographies. Let us begin with the demo. We start our demo from where we left. We are on the projects page. We can go back to our home page by clicking on the navigator home. Let's start with our data flow. Create data flow. The first step is always to add a source data set for a data flow. Let's select the data set donations by school and click add. Let's click the plus icon to add a step and select branch. Between branch and save data, you can add steps. For the first branch, let's add a step. In this step, let's select columns. We remove all columns. Select the following columns with your control key pressed. Primary focus subject, school ID, total donations, and number of donors. Click on add selected. What we have done here is we have scooped out a certain part of the data and we will make this data available to an analyst who would be interested in these columns only. In between select column and save data for the first branch, let's add another step. We need to aggregate the data. So let's aggregate. Let's choose the appropriate aggregate functions and name the aggregate columns appropriately. We remove the suggested column names. For the first branch, now click Save Data. Give a meaningful name to the data set, say Donations by Subject. Between Branch and Save Data, for the second branch, we can add a step. Again, let's select Columns. We remove all columns. And again, select appropriate columns from the left hand side. Let's select school state, school ID, total donations, total num uh, number of donors. Click on add selected. Again, in between select columns and save data of our data flow, let's add a step. We aggregate. Let's choose the appropriate aggregate functions again and also name the columns appropriately. Again, let's click on the save data and give an appropriate data set name. Essentially, in this data flow, what we have done is we have taken a source data file and split the data file into two based on analytical needs. Let's click save to save the data flow. Give it an appropriate name and click OK. Our data flow is now saved. Now let's go back and click on the go back icon. We are back to our home page. From here we navigate back to the data flows tab. Data, data flows tab. You will see your newly created data flow on the data flow section. In this lecture, you learned how to use the branch feature. Remember, this is an important tool to split data sets into functional areas as required by analyst. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn to run multiple data flows as a single transaction. Sometimes it is required that the output of one data flow is the input of another data flow. In such cases, 
we have the need for creating sequence. If we have long list of operations, it is advised to break up the processes into multiple processes. Therefore, we could have multiple data flows and then a sequence to bring together all the processes. If any flow within a sequence fails, then all the changes done in the sequence are rolled back. You can schedule sequence in Oracle Analytics just as it was available for individual data flows. In our earlier lecture, we created two data flows. We will use the two data flows to create a sequence. Let's start our demo. You can navigate to the data flow tab from home navigator data data flows if you are not on the data flows tab. You could also create a sequence from the home page too. However, we'll create our sequence right from the current page. Click create sequence. From the left pane, select the required data flow and drag it to the pane on the right. Select data flow donations by school, drag and drop. Now select the next in sequence, data flow, split donations, subject area, states, drag and drop. You could reorder the sequence, move data flow up and down as required. To do that, click on the actions menu and you should be able to move them up or down. You could also delete data flows from within a sequence. Let's save our sequence. Click save. Give it an appropriate name. Click OK. Let's go back. Hit the go back icon on the top left. You will now see under the sequence tab all the available sequences. You can manage the sequences from the action menu available on the right. Let's run or execute the sequence. The sequence is now running. You will get a completed message we go back to our data sets tab we see that there are three data sets got created just now the first one donation by school got created by the first data flow and the other two subjects and states got created by the second data flow in the sequence let's go to our projects we open the donation by school project and on the data elements pane, add data sets. For that, we click on the plus icon and add the two newly created data sets into this project. Donation by subject and state. We could click both together with our control key and select them. This project could now be used as required by our analyst. Let's save the project. In this lecture, you learn to sequence data flows. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. Here you will learn to move your output data to a database or a data lake. Often, curated data is of high value to the analyst community as against raw data. This brings in the possibility of multiple users requiring to use the data for downstream applications. Data flow helps analysts to store their curated data into a data lake or data mart or data warehouse, as you may call it. It allows you to store data in the following targets. Oracle Database, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse, Oracle Autonomous Transaction Processing, Oracle Big Data Cloud, Spark, Apache Hive, Hortonworks Hive, Map R Hive Database. Data flow allows incremental data load into targets. It helps you handle incremental data that becomes available in source system to be loaded to the target. Incremental data load is available only on Oracle Analytics Cloud. If you are working with DVD, you will not see the incremental load features with DVD. You will however be able to load data in all the supported databases. You will see these features in our demo. For our demo, we will source data from a table and store it and store the output in a target table. We are using an Oracle Analytics Cloud environment for this demo. Let's begin. From the home page, click Create Connections. In this case, I am selecting a Oracle Autonomous Transaction Processing Connection type. I will enter all the mandatory fields, give a logical connection name, 
select the wallet that my administrator would have given me, type in my username and password and click save. Let's follow the same step to create the target connection too. Again, I click create connection. I again select the Oracle Autonomous Transaction Processing database. On this database, I create a logical connection name. I again give my client credentials wallet that my administrator would have provided. Give it a username, a password and click save. Now that the connections are created, let me go back to the home and data tab. We can see our new connections created in the connections tab. Let's leverage these two connections to create a data flow. Hit the create button, select data flow. As usual, the data flow starts with a data set. Let's create a data set from the source connection we just created. Hit create data set, select the source DB connection we just created. From the available schema, select the appropriate schema. Select the appropriate table. From this table, I could select the appropriate columns, the relevant columns. However, in this case, I choose to select all the columns. I can do a quick, quick preview if required. At this stage, I will click on the fact table, fact revenue. It shows me the properties of this data set. I could also set up the new data indicator. This tagging is in, is uh, helpful for completing incremental data load. This step is as I said earlier, will not be available in your DVD environment. Having set or rather having defined the data set, now I upload up the data set into my OSC environment. Click add. I now have this data set within my OSC environment. Here again, there is one more setting that we need to do in case we have to load incremental data. We click on add new data only. We now have our data set defined and let's say for the purpose of this demo, I simply want to save this data as is into the target without doing any transformation. We click on the plus icon, select save data. In the save data set fields below, we give a logical or rather a business friendly name to the data set, the target data set. In this case, I type in target revenue. We leave the description field as it is. The save data to field, I have the choice of either saving the data as a data set in the storage or select database connection. As discussed earlier in this demo, we are going to see how we can save the data back to a database connection. So I select database connection. From the connection, I select the required connection which I created earlier to save my data. I select target DB. This was the DB where I want to store my output. From the table name, I select an appropriate table name. I type in the table name. And from when run to field, I select add new data to existing data. With this setting, I should be able to load incremental data into the target database. After having done all the settings, I simply create, click on save to store the data flow to save the data flow. I give it an appropriate name. I enter the appropriate name and click OK to save the data flow. I click on go back icon on the top left and I should be able to see the data flow I created. I recently created right from here. I could select this data flow from the actions menu. Click run to execute the data flow. It shows the status running. A successful completion message is displayed. I can now go back to the datasets tab. In the datasets tab, 
we should now be able to see our source and target uh, data sets. Let's click on the target revenue on the access menu and select inspect. It gives us information about this data set, the type of data set, the connection type it has used. From the for data access, let's change it from live to caching. Let's save this connection and click close. Typically, business analysts could now start leveraging this data set. Before creating any project for data sets that have been leveraged from database connection type, it is always suggested we go to the action menu and reload the data first before leveraging it to create your project. In this case, I'm simply reloading the data so that the latest data is available for your analysis. I click OK. And then again from the actions menu, I could simply create, hit the create project and create my visualizations from my data set. In this lecture, we learned how to store the output of a data flow into a database. We also saw features for incremental data load. Thanks for watching. Welcome to this section. In this section, we will learn how to use advanced analytics in Oracle Analytics. Let's discuss the contents of this section. You will start with the introduction of advanced analytics. To learn the concepts, you will use a business use case. You will learn to use out of the box statistical features like overlaying reference and trend lines. You will learn to generate outliers and clusters. Out of the box explain feature powers the usage of advanced analytics. You will experience the flexibility of being able to create your own calculations. You will build and share your analytics story. Towards the end, we leave you with hands-on labs and demos. We encourage you to take the quiz at the end of the section. What is advanced analytics? Advanced analytics are statistical functions that you apply to enhance the data displayed in visualizations. Oracle Analytics exposes statistical functions like trend lines, clusters in the user interface. The out of the box analytics available can be broadly categorized into two. One, overlay and projection functions like trends, reference, and forecast. Two, highlighting of clusters and outliers. These features help business users to see patterns in the underlying data while it leverages statistical techniques to bring in a scientific evaluation of data. You can use advanced functions as they are or use them to create your own calculated columns by using analytical functions available through Expression Editor. Advanced analytics is not limited to these functions exposed in the UI. You can leverage the advanced analytics framework to invoke any custom Python script and seamlessly blend its result with the rest of your analysis. The evaluate script function in Oracle Data Visualization can be used to execute any Python script registered in the script repository. It's powerful and easy to use. You will see this in our advanced courses. As a prerequisite, you need to install the DBML and related packages ready to be used by Data Visualization Desktop. The procedure has been discussed in our introduction course titled Modern Data Visualization with Oracle Analytics. You may want to refer to it. However, if you are working in Oracle Analytics Cloud environment, this prerequisite on installing DVML is not required. To learn advanced analytics in the Oracle environment, we will use a business use case, a sales forecasting project. You will apply the various features as you go through this project. In this project, you are required to analyze trends in revenue and forecast based on the basis of available data. You are expected to create a plan to improve profitability without having any adverse impact on the top line revenue. You have data for last five years, which you can leverage to create your business plan. With this introduction, we proceed to the next lecture to start working with advanced analytics features in Oracle. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. In this lecture, you will learn to create a baseline or a reference line for the available data set. Baselines or reference lines helps us assess the performance. 
let us understand why we need a reference line. When we are dealing with the last set of data, analysts are posed with a question. How does one data point compare to the overall data set presented? In such case, analysts may prefer to choose reference line. Say for example, which customer segments have registered sales higher than the average? If the comparative question is presented differently, say, which customer segments fall within average sales and maximum sales? In that case, a reference band would help present the visual better. The reference feature is invoked by a right click menu option on a visual. The various choice of statistical functions like average, median, percentile, etc. are also available to analysts just by a few clicks. Let's see these features at work. We will quickly bring in the data for this project and see advanced analytics at work. Let's start with the demo. Let's start by getting our data in. On the top right, click Create, Data Set. A new window pops up. Click on Click to Browser. Browse to the location on your desktop where you have downloaded and saved the sample order example file. Select the file. Click Open. The file opens up. You need to click Add to bring the data file as a data set in your analytics environment. The data then opens up on the data preparation panel. Here you can prepare, transform or enrich your data in a machine assisted environment. For the purpose of this project, we will not go through any transformation or enrichment. Let's start off the project by clicking create project on the top right. You are brought straight to the visualization pane of the project. You decide to analyze quantity ordered. Select quantity ordered and product subcategory. With the control key pressed on. Right click and select pick visualization. Let's select line from the available list of visuals. You now see a quantity ordered by product subcategory visual. How each product category compares to each other is a question one needs to answer. Not an easy one for an untrained eye. Let's make it easy. Right click on the visual. Select Add Statistics, click Reference Line. A reference line is drawn. It clearly shows which products are doing better than average and which products need to pull up. On the left bottom pane, you see the properties of the current visual. Click on the Analytics tab. In the Reference section, click on Average. You can select from multiple functions to generate your trend line. Functions like Median, percentile amongst others. For the purpose of this project, we leave it at average. Let's quickly create another visual. Click on the menu available at the top right corner of the visual. Click select Edit. Click Duplicate Visualization from the Available menu option. While you are on the second visual, let's change our focus from Quantity Ordered to Profit. Drag and drop profit from the data elements pane to the values y axis section of the visual grammar pane. Replace quantity ordered with profit. Faced with the same issue of comparative, let's pull up a reference line. Right click on the visual, click add statistics reference line. You had earlier seen reference drawn as a line. You also have the option to overlay the reference as a band. To overlay a band, click on the Analytics tab in the Reference section. Click on Line on the Method field. Two options open up. Select Band. After you select the method as Band, click on Custom from the Functions field. You see two functions for Band method. One is a custom, other standard deviation. For this project, select custom. You are now able to define the two ends of the band. Let's click on minimum. Select average. You now see the band on the visual clearly highlighting the products that lie between average and the best or in this case maximum. 
To further analyze the relationship between quantity ordered and profit, you select the two measures with control key pressed on, right click and select create best visualization. You now drag and drop product subcategory onto the category points. To make product stand out on this visual, you now drag and drop product subcategory onto the color field in the grammar panel. We see a scatter of products with various combinations of profits and quantity ordered. To classify this data for some actionable insight, let's add reference line. You right click on the visual, select add statistics and click reference line. You see an average profit line overlaid. Let's again right click on the visual and again select add statistics. Click on reference line. This time another quantity ordered average line is overlaid on the visual. It clearly splits the data in four quadrants and suggests tactical steps that business needs to take to improve performance. Products in quadrant two, that is top left, needs a cost rationalization to improve profit and products in quadrant 4, bottom right, need a marketing push to bump up volumes. Let's save our project. On the save project window, for the name field, enter advanced sales analysis, then click save at the bottom of the window. In this lecture, you saw how reference line is put to use in performance evaluation and decision making process. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the lecture. In this lecture, you will learn to make data driven prediction. Before we start, let's understand a few basic concepts. What is trend line and why is it required? Most of the time, when we are dealing with financial metrics, we would like to see trends to gauge performance over time. That's where trend line comes in. It shows a general direction of data with respect to time. A trend line is also available to analysts when they want to see the regression trend between two matrices, say for example, sales and margin. Trend often take analysts to the next question, where are we heading? To answer this question, we have forecasting. It helps analysts predict the metrics over a time series. Both these functionality can be invoked by a mere right click. Let's see them at work in the following demo. We continue in the same project. You need to add a canvas. You click at the plus icon at the bottom of the page. A new canvas opens up. You will create a sales over time visual. For this, you select sales and order date. Keeping the control key pressed, select, right click and select create best visualization. Data across all five years show up. Let us focus on the data for the last year. You click on order date and from the available options, select create filter. Let's put the start date as January 1st, 2015. After selecting the date, we can click out of the filter window. The filter applies. It is rather difficult to see a broad direction of sales over a 365 day period. You right click on the visual, select add statistics. Click on trend line. You are now presented with a clear sense of direction of the sales. It is an upward trend presented by a linear trend line. On the bottom left pane, you see the properties of the current visual. Click on the analytics tab. In the trend section, click on linear. You see the out of the box methods available. For this purpose, we leave it at linear. You have seen trend line on a time, time series visual. Let's take up an analysis between two measures. You select profit and sales with control key pressed, right click and select best visualization. A scatter graph, graph appears. You drag and drop product subcategory to the category points on the grammar panel. You want to understand the relationship between the two measures, in this case, two business KPIs. You right click on the visual, 
select add statistics click on trend line a sales trend line is created the linear equation or formula can be used to predict the value of either sales or profit if one of the variables is known you swap profit with sales on the visual at the grammar pane the trend line is now clear you can compute profit by substituting by substituting the value of sales in this equation you have seen how you can use trend line not only to see trend against a time series but to use a trend line as a tool to spell out mathematical relation between two variables this relationship can be linear exponential or polynomial you have your sales trend now you can use it to build for forecasted sales let's see how select sales and order date keep the control key pressed on drag and drop the same below the two visuals right click on this new visual select add statistics forecast on the left bottom pane you see the properties of the current visual click on the analytics tab in the forecast section on the periods field enter 90 representing 90 days of forecasting period while on the properties tab click on seasonal arima it shows two options for calculating forecast seasonal arima and arima for the purpose of this project we'll leave it at seasonal arima let's save our project click save button at the top right in this lecture you saw how we could use trend line and forecasting in problem solving situations thanks for watching welcome to this lecture in this lecture we will learn more about our data while we talk about discovery of patterns in data it is important to discuss both outliers and clusters with reference to patterns in data outliers are data points that lie outside the overall pattern of distribution of data it can also be described as anomalies or aberrations in the available data these aberrations are important to understand sometimes they lead us to understand data quality sometimes they also lead us to understand some unique business value in some cases it also helps us correct the course of business clusters or clustering involves grouping of data points into groups clusters or segments cluster analysis tries to identify homogeneous groups of data points clusters or segment analysis brings in immense value to decision making process by helping create greater intentions for various groups both these techniques of applying outliers and clusters are available to analysts at a right click let's do a quick demo of these two important statistical techniques let's continue in the same project you need to add a canvas to click you click at the plus icon at the bottom of the page in this canvas we want to evaluate the performance of our cities you select sales and city right click and select pick visualization you select the scatter category from the available list a scatter diagram showing the performance of the cities with respect to sales is shown right click on the visual select add statistics click on outliers you see the outliers in green both at the top side and the bottom typically you are seeing cities that are doing way above average and also cities that are lying at the bottom of the list these outliers typically require further investigation on the left bottom pane you see the properties of the current visual click on the analytics tab in the outlier section on the algorithm field click on k means it shows two algorithms available to choose from for the current project we leave it at k means let's create another visual quickly and see outliers for a different measure click on the menu icon on the visual select edit click on duplicate visualization while on the new visualization drag and drop profit on sales that makes it a visual for profit by cities showing the outliers city of adelaide can be an outlier by profit but a non outlier 
when the algorithm is run with sales to identify outlier which is evident from our visual you saw how outliers can be found by using a single measure now you will find outliers for multiple measures select sales and profit again right click create best visualization on the scatter drag and drop city to the category points on the grammar panel right click on the new visual select statistics click on outliers again you see that the classification of outliers are based on different measures against which the outliers are being found once the outliers are defined on the visual let's click on victoria again you see that the classification of outliers are different based on the measures against which the outliers are being found for example victoria in this case is an outlier when we measure it by profit and sales however individually by sales and profit it is in the normal distribution let's create a new canvas to explore clusters click on the plus icon at the bottom of the page a new canvas is added let's select sales and profit right click and create best visualization drag and drop city to the category points right click on this visual add statistics clusters based on sales and profit performance the cities are now classified or grouped under five clusters typically this can be the starting point for any segmentation exercise on the left bottom pane you see the properties of the current visual click on the analytics tab in the clusters section on the algorithm field click on k means it shows two algorithms available to choose from for the current project we leave it at k means on the same section on the groups field type in 4 and press enter you will see four clusters now depending on your need you could create appropriate groups or segments click save at the top right in this lecture you saw how you could create both outliers and clusters with a single click and also manage its properties if required thanks for watching welcome to the lecture in this lecture you will learn to use the out of the box explain tool to review outliers outliers are important as they may have a story to tell in our earlier lecture we saw the importance of being able to identify outliers most discovery and exploratory analysis starts off with the personal bias of the analyst and therefore considerable time and energy may be consumed to arrive at a particular business hypothesis this is more so because of the large number of attributes or parameters that influence outcome oracle analytics brings an out of the box tool or feature called explain you would have seen this feature at work in our earlier section explain helps analysts to one understand what drives your business two isolate segments that have highest predictive significance and three identify anomalies that require further investigation however in this section we are going to show how we could use this explain feature to quickly identify outliers from our data sets let's begin our demo let's continue in the same project you need to add a canvas you click at the plus icon at the bottom of the page select profit right click profit and explain profit This is an ML feature. It presents how selected measure, in this case profit, relates to all attributes in the data set. It also highlights the top anomalies of profit. Click on anomalies of profit. You have to wait for a while. The system searches through the anomalies of profit. While it is doing that, it creates multiple updates for you. On the bottom right. you may see a refresh view button click on the refresh view button if presented else after the search is completed you may scroll down to see your top anomalies 
from the presented anomalies of four anomalies i will select the third anomaly select the graph and then on the top click on add selected what it does is it creates an auto visual and presents it directly on the canvas alternatively you could have also identified the same outlier however you would have taken multiple iterations to reach at what the machine reached for you in couple of minutes for the purpose of this project we will not go through multiple iterations but quickly create one select product sub category and profit right click and select pick visualization select scatter category right click on the new visual right click select add statistics click on outliers to match it with the visual on the left you drag and drop ship mode onto the filter field of the grammar panel select delivery truck select delivery truck and click on the visual you see the top outlier you see the top outlier to be the office machines this same product is also suggested as an outlier on the left visual which was auto generated in summary identification of outliers could be a long drawn process however the explain feature has made it easy by auto suggesting top outliers click save on the top right thanks for watching welcome to the lecture in this lecture we will see how we can leverage the calculations or rather the advanced calculations through expression builders to do more with advanced analytics advanced analytics is not limited to functions exposed in the user interface you can use analytics function as they are or use them to create your own calculated columns by using analytical functions available through the expression editor you get more control on the parameters that these functions use of course the analyst is expected to know why and how of these statistical parameters we will cover a demo on how to use the expression builder however the statistics and data science behind it will be out of scope of our discussion analyst can also leverage the advanced analytics framework to invoke any custom python scripts and seamlessly blend its results with rest of your analysis this feature is also out of scope for this lecture let's start with our demo let's continue in the same project we go back to canvas 4 click on the menu icon on the visual and quickly duplicate this existing visual while you are still on the second visual drag and drop product category to the shape field of the grammar panel on the left visual click on the city hong kong you see the same city now falls under two clusters or segments when the definition of the cluster also includes product category sometimes you may want a common definition of cluster or segment to persist across all visuals in that case you could use a custom defined cluster and use the cluster as definition that persists across visuals in the following steps we will create a common definition and use it across visuals let's come back to the visual on the left and duplicate that visual Let's rearrange the new visual. Let's remove the earlier cluster definition from this third visual that we created right now. We will now create our own cluster definition. For that, on my calculations, right click and select add calculations. On the new calculation window, in the name field, enter my city cluster.
from the function builder on the right click on analytics you see a host of advanced calculation functions that can be used for this example we will select cluster the cluster function shows up on the left let's complete the expression complete your cluster definition you will also see certain statistical parameters like algorithms to use and the number of clusters it needs to create let's click validate after the expression is validated you can click on the save button the new calculation is now available to use let's drag and drop this onto the color you now see the grouping on the third visual which is exactly similar to the first grouping however the difference is in the first visual on top the cluster was created through the out of the box uh, feature however in the second visual below we have created our own cluster definition let's use this third visual to create another visual right click on the visual select edit click on duplicate visualization let's rearrange this new visual while on this new visual let's drag and drop the product category column on the shape field of the grammar panel on the bottom left visual now select hong kong you will see the city cluster definition now persist across the visual on the bottom right too that is the product category of the products sold in hong kong are still marked under the same cluster or segment this is because it is using the custom defined cluster we created earlier using the expression builder let's save our project from the top right save button in this lecture you learned to create custom definitions of advanced analytic functions using the expression builder it allows users control over the parameters of the algorithm and also help persistent usage of all custom definitions for all segmentation requirements thanks for watching welcome to the lecture in this lecture we will conclude by telling our story essentially the project that we delivered we wrap it up as a story and present it to the stakeholders having analyzed trends in sales and identified potential areas of sales and profitability performance improvements let's share our discovery with other stakeholders as a story the narrate feature brings an easy to use interface which analysts can use to quickly create powerpoint like presentations enabling them to collaborate their business hypothesis let's go into the demo let's continue in the same project to be able to create a story and present it you have to use the narrate button on the top right click narrate while on the narrate section you see a list of canvases that you have made in the project you may choose all or few of the canvases to present your business case for this project you select the canvas 2 from the menu and click add to story the canvas is added on canvas 2 to change the title of the canvas type in sales trend and 90 days forecast you could use the font section for additional formatting if required on the canvas property pane at the bottom left click description a description text box opens up below the page title double click on the text box and type in type in the basis on which your sales trend has been presented your first slide of your storyboard presentation is ready now drag and drop the canvas one to the strip below this adds the second slide or storyboard to your story again on the title page double click on canvas one and enter a title type in strategies for product categories
you could again use the font section for additional formatting if required. On the canvas property pane at the bottom left, again click description. A description text box opens up. Type in a description for this slide or presentation. Here you mention that the bottom right quadrant needs a marketing push and the top left quadrant needs a review of cost structure. You can effectively use description box to describe your presentation better. Your second slide or storyboard of the presentation is ready. Now you drag and drop the canvas 3 to the strip below. This adds the third slide or storyboard to your story. Again, on the page title on Canvas 3, you may want to change the name of the title. Type in Next Steps as the title of your presentation. Similar to the other, let's use the description box effectively to detail out our next steps. So, as our next steps, we want to have a detailed review of consumer behavior and delivery cost of the cities that are highlighted. Essentially, these are the outliers which we need to study further. This may help us improve our business performance. Our story preparation is almost done. Let's save our project. Click save at the top right button. Let's click back on the first slide of the storyboard. To start the presentation, click present at the top right. Your storyboard opens up. The title and description add to the context of the canvas being pre presented. Here you present your trend and forecast. You also talk about what this sales and forecast is based on. Let's click the next page. On the second page, you talk about the strategies to improve your performance. Navigate to the other canvas through the navigation strip at the bottom. Click on next page at the bottom right. On the third page, you conclude with the next steps. You close the presentation mode from the cross icon. In this lecture, you learn to utilize the advanced analytic features and present your business case as a story in this project. Thank you. Hello and welcome to section 5. In this section, you will apply all the learnings you have done so far in this course and extend that to advance an augmented process by leveraging a machine learning framework within Oracle Analytics environment. We will be using a business use case for an organization who wants to predict a count of bike rental so that they can estimate the workload and the volume they should be expecting in the next six months. To build that predictive model, we will start with the basic concept of machine learning as well as the factors that you should be aware of while building and applying such models. Then we will look at the mechanics of building and applying models in Oracle Analytics environment. Remember, this is a business user driven approach, which means that the process of building and applying model is visually intuitive for any developer or business users to build and apply machine learning model for predictive analytics without actually doing any code. Once you train the machine learning model based on the historical data about bike rental, we want to evaluate the model efficiency and score before we decide to use that model for prediction. So we will look at how to evaluate and how to view the score for the particular model. Then we will leverage the model to do predictive analytics. We will also explore the feature called scenario modeling or in another word, what if analysis directly within the data visualization environment. Towards the end of the section, I will highlight additional demo which takes you to the comprehensive process of end-to-end -end machine learning approach to a data visualization environment. Before we start learning the concept of machine learning, let's review our business problem at the hand. A bike rental company wants to predict the number of bike rentals they should expect for next six months so they can plan properly. To achieve that, they want to leverage historical data that contains the count of rentals and the rental related factors such as temperature, humidity, wind speed, time and day, etc. For this demonstration purpose, we will be using historical data from January 1st, 2011 to 13 June 2012, almost one and a half year of data. And the organization wants to predict a workload or the count of bike rental they should expect for next six months 
you will be using oracle analytics machine learning capabilities to help predict number of rentals you should expect for next six months by leveraging the historical data creating a machine learning model and then apply that model to predict for next six months so let's get started we'll see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture before we start building and applying machine learning model in oracle analytics let's review some of the basic concepts around machine learning itself from analytical workload perspective, there are typically four types of analytics that different users might want to do and some users may span across multiple classification of the analytical task. Very basic analytical activity is around descriptive analytics where the user simply wants to understand what has happened. This is typically a pure play BI environment. Extending descriptive analytics and pretty closely related to descriptive analytics is called diagnostic analytics. The insight into past is extended with a lot more historical data so that you can build some more long-term strategic analytics, reporting and dashboards to understand why certain behavior of the data is happening. So it's more of a manual discovery process based on the descriptive analytics. Based on the information available so far is to understand given the current state of my business, what might happen in the future. This is where the concept of predictive analytics comes into picture. It is to learn from the past or existing data to understand potential and hidden patterns as well as the insights that you have not looked at before that might help you understand your future state of the business. Going even beyond predictive analytics, a more advanced topic and analytical task is around prescriptive analytics. System would start giving you a recommendation what you should do to achieve certain state of business. Let's look at some of the concrete examples so you understand the difference between standard BI and analytics versus advanced analytics concept. Here are the examples of typical BI reports. You might be reviewing sales report and identify sales are declining in particular region and you may want to find out why by looking at more detailed reports. You might be able to figure out some casual inference such as the population that driving a sales or maybe the geographical region that might be influencing most of your sales. Now predictive analytics will actually give you a forecast. Maybe you want to predict a customer char on HR attrition in our business use case for this section. We want to predict bike rental that the organization should expect for next six months. And the prescriptive examples are, for example, if you want to maximize profit, here are the recommendations to set the price. If your organization is facing a lot of employee turnover, the predictive analytics might suggest what might happen to particular employee at risk and prescription analytics might suggest action that you can take to maintain that employee. We are going to focus more around predictive class in this particular section. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will cover some of the basic machine learning concept. How does machine learn from the data based on a different types of machine learning algorithms? There is obviously a difference between how we traditionally a programming to produce certain type of output versus we make machine learn from the data and produce a model which then can help us to predict the future data set. Traditionally, we've been writing a programs to take an input data and then produce output by manipulating those data. In a machine learning environment, we take the inputs as well as the output to understand the behavior of the output based on an input parameters and create a program which is trained based on the input and output behavior of historical data. The output of the machine learning programming is typically called as a model and that model then can be used to produce the predictive data. Therefore, the type of machine learning model that we want to produce as well as use for a specific business problem we will be driven by the business objective. Each machine learning model or the algorithm in a technical word can be classified in a three different categories. The first one is a supervised learning in which we provide historical data with input and output and produce a program that can predict and analyze the data based on a specific business problem. The simple example is sales forecast or decision tree to produce yes or no kind of answer. In our business use case example of bike rental, we are going to produce a numerical prediction based on 
में अवर हिस्टोरिकल रेंटल डेटा द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग कैन बी कैटेगराइज और अनसुपरवाइज मॉडल द पर्पज ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ एल्गोरिदम्स इज टू प्रोड्यूस ए हिडन इन साइट एंड बिहेवियर पैटर्न इन द डेटा विदाउट फोकसिंग ऑन प्री डिटर्माइंड एट्रीब्यूट विच मीन्स वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू टेल द एल्गोरिदम वॉट काइंड ऑफ आउटपुट वी आर लुकिंग एट बट रेदर वी वॉन्ट प्रोग्राम्स टू आइडेंटिफाई clusters or the outliers in the data by itself and classify it for those data so this is more of exploratory in a nature to find hidden insights within the data and third type of algorithms which is extension to supervised uh, process is to provide a loop back or feedback into the machine learning model to continuously learn based on what was predicted and what was the actual outcome and improve the model performance this kind of algorithms are called reinforcement algorithm now supervised and unsupervised class of learning can be further classified by method in which different kinds of mathematical algorithms are implemented to produce a specific set of business objective let's look at some of the most commonly used tech techniques for different kinds of algorithm the most common type of machine learning model for supervised learning is around classification and regression while commonly used unsupervised learning methods are clustering association rules and anomaly detection let me walk you through each of this method with example let's understand supervised learning for classification and regression kind of problems first The classification algorithms helps us understand interested object in a data set to classify that object in a known set of classes. Typically used to identify customer and put them into known set of segment. Since this is supervised learning algorithm, we have already trained the model to understand different characteristics of the different fruit types to classify fruit into a particular known set of class if we were interested only to distinguish between a fruit and non fruit entity we would be producing output like yes or no which is a binary output in contrast the regression is used to predict a number how many fruits will i eat tomorrow based on my history of fruit consumption over the last few weeks or months or year in supervised learning for predicting numbers we train the model the same way as we do the classifier the only difference is that the outcome is continuous number in our business use case example we are going to produce numerical data for next 6 months of rental now each type type of algorithm whether it's classification regression can be implemented with the different kinds of mathematical models and each models are further fine tuned to produce certain type of prediction these mathematical methods are typically called algorithms for example commonly known regression algorithms are linear regression support vector machines or generalized linear model and more commonly used classification algorithms are logistic regression or decision tree or neural network as well as support vector machine unsupervised learning also have number of different methods like clustering association rules as well as anomaly detection first type of unsupervised learning is called clustering clustering is about finding a natural groups in your data for example you may group a fruits by color or by a shape these classes are not predefined in the data set but we would rather have a machine learning model produce different set of classification either by color by size by shape and produce a result that puts different objects in a set of class Usually we use clustering when we have a high number of attributes and volume of data that makes it impossible to find different groups manually. For example, customer segmentation is most commonly used use case. Association rule in the other hand is to find a correlation or association between the activity or things that occurs together. Most commonly used marketing term for association rule is called market basket analysis. For example, if I buy fruit in a grocery store, which fruits I buy together or for a retailer, what is the product that customer buys together shows the association or correlation between those two products. So what association rule algorithm does is that it finds the rules about the things that occurs together and predict a percentage of chance to events 
occurring together. It turns out that you can use these rules in the other way too. Perhaps you are responsible for operating some mechanical equipment. You could use association rule to track and uncover relationship between say high temperature, pressure, vibration with a particular failure mode. So these kind of rules can help with the root cause analysis as well. The third category of unsupervised learning is anomaly detection. It is to find something that is out of ordinary. It is like finding a vegetable as part of my fruits. Now this is rather simple example and a more valid use case could be to find a potential fraud. This is done by looking at all transactions and anomaly detection algorithm would be able to find those transactions that are not following particular pattern. It could be sudden change in amount or multiple transaction with the same amount during a short period of time or some other patterns that define as a fraudulent patterns from historical learning. Those transactions would then be flagged for further investigation. Of course, there is additional machine learning techniques such as reinforcement learning that is using rewards and punishment as a feedback to steer it towards a goal. But supervised and unsupervised techniques are by far the most commonly used machine learning models. I hope it helps you understand the key concept of machine learning as well as the most commonly used machine learning types and the methods. Thank you for attending this lecture. We'll see you in the next one. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In previous lecture, we looked at some of the commonly used machine learning types as well as the methods that help us produce predictive outcome based on a business objective. For machine learning process to work better for our business objective, it is very important to understand your existing data as well as business objectives and enrich and prepare data that can produce a better machine learning model. So in this lecture, we will highlight a couple of examples that might help you understand the importance of data enrichment. One of the important step in a data preparation is to identify highly correlated data attributes. In a data science framework, we often call a dimensional reduction process or feature engineering process in which we try to identify set of attributes that are redundant in a data set and not needed for machine learning model. To effectively do such kind of feature engineering, it is very important to go through an iterative process of data exploration and dimensional reduction process to really understand data behavior to avoid enforcing a bias in your machine learning model. For example, if we have a cloud of points in a 3D dimension X, Y and Z, by feature engineering or dimensional reduction process, the points can be projected into two-dimensional plane rather than three-dimensional. If we ignore one of the dimension and present the points in a 2D, for example, XZ plane, we can see the cloud of points looks like a triangle. This could be a discovery or this could be just a reduction of one dimension producing certain kind of output which may not be desired output. Similar type of results occur on other projection as well. What this example demonstrate that if we ignore any one dimension for the point, it could force the machine learning model to produce the outcome in a specific direction. The machine learning model will be biased to classify the cloud of points. Another important aspect of machine learning process is to validate the output or the prediction itself. For example, the picture on the slide is only a set of information that is given to machine learning model it may understand from the data it looks like the two person coming close to each other. While in fact, what is really happening with the data is completely different. Therefore, it is important to have iterative process end to end from preparing data to enriching data to understanding relevant attributes and dimension to process the feature engineering and then have machine learning model learn from it evaluate the result that machine learning produce and fine-tune the model, fine-tune the data until you're satisfied with the type of output is delivered by the model and then leverage that model for prediction. Thanks for attending this lecture. We'll see you in the next one. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we'll briefly go over built-in capabilities of machine learning and advanced analytics functions available right within Oracle Analytics. Let's look at some of the built-in capabilities of Oracle Analytics. 
we already looked at uh, one click advanced analytics functions in a previous section it is really a quick way to generate trend line or reference line cluster outliers forecast uh, or time series uh, prediction and also the what if scenario based analysis which we will be looking at it in this section we also looked at explain feature which allows you to identify behavior of the data the statistics about the data casual influencer as well as anomaly detection in the data for a specific measure or attribute and the third framework is really a train and apply machine learning model for numeric prediction or classification or binary classification clustering etc so all the different concept that we looked at in the previous lecture you can visually build model for a specific business objective so each model uh, task will have set of algorithms that you can choose from so different methods that we discussed earlier and each algorithm has a set of parameters that you can tune the algorithm with and once you have train the model we'll use it to apply that model for prediction we looked at typical machine learning process in a previous lecture the first thing is obviously you want a pretty good idea about the business objectives that you are trying to achieve the next thing is the data understanding we want to predict for a future bike rentals we need to have historical data which we can use to train the model and then predict so we need to capture the right set of data we need to describe and reach the data as we need maybe the data set may not have all the different kinds of attributes that you think is meaningful for this kind of analysis maybe you want to add a geolocation maybe you want to add a more demographic information about the people who rented a bike the third step is really a data preparation you have to select the right set of attribute uh, you have to clean the data for missing values duplicates maybe you want to join multiple data sets to add more attributes to your data and you want to go through the dimensional reduction process or feature engineering process to limit the data with only meaningful attributes and then you go apply that uh, data for a specific type of algorithms and specific method in that algorithm so selecting and applying model is again iterative process you may want to try couple of models so once you build the model you evaluate you look at the score you look at and verify the output right we saw the example of what is being predicted is really meaningful once you have selected a model that fits your requirement you go and use that model to do your prediction this is typical data scientist flow now when we apply this in oracle analytics environment what we typically will be doing is a business user driven approach not everybody is data scientist not everybody needs to know any technicality behind the models and understanding the python and java or, or anything like that but how can we enable user and developer to take advantage of some of the predefined algorithms and methods and apply that in onto a data in a visual manner and build a predictive analytics so we looked at some of the explain feature and data visualization features that really enables you to understand the data better right the explain is really powerful to highlight anomalies for example that helps you in a data preparation step using data preparation ui or data flow ui to really prepare a data set that you can leverage to train the model building and applying model is through the data flow process evaluate the model we will look at the scores and understand the model output and then we'll use it to do uh, what if analysis or predictive analysis thank you for listening to this lecture we will start working on our business use case in the next lecture in this lecture we will start working with our bike rental data so the very first step is really to understand what is available in historical data as we discussed the first step is to explore the data look at some of the obvious natural patterns relationship between the data and identify some meaningful attributes and set of data set that we want to use it for machine learning model so let's import our data and and do some basic data exploration before we build machine learning model let's add our bike rental historical data into oracle analytics environment we'll start with creating a new data set and select the historical data import that file is by renting training data set and all the data sets available to you in the resource folder so you can perform the same task let's select the file 
as we scroll through the data the last uh, column tells us how many actual bike rental happen on that particular day add this as a data set so we can continue with the next step so just click on add let's quickly create a visual project right away to understand how this data represents we are really interested in exploring the data understanding some obvious data behavior double click on count it tells us the total number of rentals for all the historical data uh, look at this count progression over the times so let's uh, double click on a date column now the chart is automatically changed to a trend line right because we included the time component we could have also select date time and the count together and select base visualization which will end up being a trend line or you can pick your own visualization right so now we have at least a trend line it shows quite up and down over the time but overall trend seems to be increasing so let's uh, see how the trend looks like by simply selecting right click and say add statistics and let's understand the trend line now let's examine the data with couple of more um, attributes by season and number of count and let's pick a based visualization that data represents a high rental in a summer versus a winter time that makes sense maybe i am interested to add count by whether it was a working day or not right so instead of season i may want to slice it by working day or not now as an analyst i'm simply trying to understand the different attributes available in the data set how the bike rental counts represent with respect to other parameters now i can continue to build few more uh, visualization with respect to different attributes but now i can also leverage the built-in function of explain to really understand the behavior of the count so let's look at the count and run the explain so now we'll be able to figure out some more insights in the data we can also examine some additional attribute right so the instance really does not make sense it's kind of a, a non useful id so this is another way to identify when you are building the machine learning model some of the columns or attributes in the data set it's not really important right the season obviously as we looked at earlier um, looks like interesting one the year may not be as effective it's just showing yearly count may not necessarily driving any kind of influence over the count influence over the rental working day or not holiday or not right so we are going to leverage some of these insights as our guiding visualization to select the right attribute to train our model and we can also look at anomalies identified by explain feature in this case it is highlighting that during the working day number of expected count based on certain weather condition should be around 200000 or so. but it is only showing 169000 so this kind of anomaly chart helps us understand some outliers very quickly we can select some of these outliers to include in our visualization here it's little bit more interesting outlier where it says when the weather is cloudy we expect the count for fall seasons to be around 135 but it is only showing 100000 or so and now we can go ahead and click on add selected it went ahead and created a visualization for us now this is a much better visual page so let's save this project i'm going to save this project as a bike rental prediction and now we are ready to build our first model we'll see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will examine the process of building machine learning model within the visualization framework in the previous lecture we examined our historical data through visualization and understood some of the data distribution as well as outliers now we will take that historical data to create our first machine learning model let's go ahead and create a model To start building our model, we need to create a data flow. So let's go ahead and create a data flow from the home page. If you haven't saved the project, make sure you save it before you jump to the home page and click on a create data flow. 
Whenever we create a data flow, we need to select at least one data set. In our example, we want to select a bike data set. Once the data set is added, you can click on a plus icon to add next step in the process. Or you can simply select drag and drop functions on the data flow steps. We also want to make sure that we are not including any redundant columns or the attributes that are not meaningful for machine learning program to learn from. We can remove those columns before we actually create a machine learning model. So let's go ahead and create a next step using a select column where we don't need to include instance ID or the record ID for the model. It doesn't provide any meaningful information. So we can remove those columns and you can see there are two columns are removed and rest of the columns are select. The next step is to really import a algorithm that, that we want to use as a model. There are many different kinds of algorithms available. The numerical prediction, multi-class classification, clustering, binary clustering. Once you select train numerical prediction and add it as a step, it gives you an option to select a specific type of algorithm, specific method. We discussed that each type of algorithm could have different implementation method based on the different mathematical formulas and processes that algorithm use it. And so we have option to predict numerical value based on linear regression or elastic net linear regression model, random forest, or even CART, a numerical prediction algorithm. In our example, because we are trying to do numerical prediction, let's go ahead and use simple algorithm, which is linear regression for our use case. As we added a step to include linear regression machine learning model, it allows you to tune some of the parameters for that algorithm. So very first thing you have to select is what you are trying to predict. In our example, we are trying to select count. So let's go ahead and select count as a target column. So this is how the program will learn with historical data, how the count is influenced by other factors. Now you also have options to select different kinds of regression method, even for simple linear regression. Another important parameter that you want to check and verify is the training partition percentage. What it means is when we use historical data that we have in this training data set, 80% of the data will be used to train the model so that model can understand the count behavior based on the other factors. And then the program itself will also do a self test with the remaining 20% of data to predict bike rental counts and evaluate itself. Let's go ahead and save this particular model. So here save model, we are giving a name to a machine learning model. Let's, let's call it bike rental count with uh, linear regression model. Let's go ahead and save this particular data flow. Call it bike rental linear regression model data flow. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and execute the data flow. Now the data flow is completed and the model has been trained. In the next lecture, we will examine the model that we just created and understand the model accuracy and model score. We'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we will evaluate model accuracy. In previous lecture, we just built our model with linear regression algorithm. Let's go ahead and look at the actual model that was created and examine the properties of that machine learning model. After the completion of our data flow execution, the model was created. The way to examine the model is to go and look at a navigation tab and select machine learning page. Now here you can see the bike rental count linear regression model was created just now. Let's go ahead and examine the properties by using the action menu and select inspect. Once you open the inspect machine learning model window, the general tab provides information about the model name, what was the predicted attribute, in our case it was count, and the class we used which is numerical prediction using a linear regression model. Let's look at quality of model itself. It highlights a pretty good bell curve, right? which is what we expected from linear regression kind of algorithm. Here we get the information on the accuracy of matrix of a linear regression model as well as residual value and R square value. The residual values are the error that model exhibit against the training data. 
it is mainly the difference between the predicted value versus the actual observed value the r square shows the 81 percent fitment of the model with the testing data which is generally considered a pretty good fit model for linear regression algorithm let's look at some of the related artifacts that model has generated these data sets are internal to model but it is exposed here to inspect so that as a developer or user you have pretty good insight into how the model interpreted the data how did the model identified the coefficients of various variables in the, your data set to come up with the best fit model. As a data scientist, you might be interested in learning more about the key drivers of your bike rental count. So you might want to download this data set. You can click on it. As you click on it, you can see that it automatically brought the data set into your visualization page here. Let's close this and examine the coefficient. Let's go ahead and display coefficient by driver name. As we picked driver name and coefficient, you can see that there are different values for coefficient across various variables packs the bike rental. Let's examine a little bit more intuitive way and understand whether this there is a positive correlation or negative correlation for any of these factors. So let's bring in this correlation attribute into a color pane. Now we can clearly identify which attributes are positively correlated to bike rental count versus negatively correlated. Temperature seems to be pretty strong positive influencer on bike rental count that translate into the high bike rental in summertime as we observed earlier. So this proves data that we are observing and the linear regression model has a match and identify right model for us. So in this section, you learn to inspect the quality of your model and also analyze the model related statistics and brought them into visualization for further analysis. So we'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will apply the machine learning model onto a new data set to make a prediction. To achieve that, just like we created a data flow to generate machine learning model will leverage the same process and create another data flow to consume the model created and, and produce a target data set along with the prediction. So let's go ahead and do that. Now our model is trained and created. We have reviewed the quality of model. Now we are ready to make predictions. Let's go ahead and create a new data flow. The training data we use to create a model is already having a bike rental count. So let's go ahead and create a new data set to include non bike count data set. I'm going to select a file by by rental for prediction. Click OK. And now in this data set, we have all the other attributes like uh, season, the date, the month number, the holiday, working day or not, like the prediction of the weather. But the data set does not contain column called bike rental count or the count, right? But based on these attributes, we are going to predict using our newly created model. So let's go ahead and add this data set by clicking add. At this stage, we can simply apply the model on this data set. If you scroll down to a data flow step, one of the step is apply model. You can drag and drop. And now it as you apply the model, it highlights all the different machine learning model that you may have created in this framework. Let's go ahead and select the model that we just created in the previous lecture. In the step editor, as we apply the model, the model is going to predict one value called predicted value and we can give it a name for our business purpose. We can call it a count as we had it earlier or we can say bike rental prediction. Let's go ahead and add save. Now we are creating a target data set which includes the newly created column called predicted by count. So we're going to call this uh, target data as the bike rental predictor set and go ahead and save this data flow. So now we are saving the data flow itself. Let's call it predicted data set data flow and click OK. So let's go ahead and run the data flow itself. Now the data flow has completed 
and go ahead and look at our data page now by rental predicted data set created just now you can simply click on action menu from the data set and say create project just like earlier let's select by rental prediction and date and pick the best visualization let's go ahead and add trend line to it just like earlier let's bring in our original data set in the same project for comparison purpose we can do so by simply selecting plus and say add data set we are going to bring in our training data and say add to project let's go ahead and select our line chart for training data and for this chart let's go ahead and select a filter specific to this particular chart only for the training data to look at the same months as we have predicted value so for example july to december let's filter that for july to december of last year bring a date into a filter section for this particular chart and we will use same duration which is july to december let's bring that below and also apply the trend line now we can see that historical data that from july to december the bike rental is trending typically low and our predicted value is highlighting the same behavior so in this lecture not only we applied the machine learning model we created to a new set of data to predict and we also compared it with the same time period of previous year thanks for watching this lecture we'll see you in the next one in this lecture we will look at alternative way to consume machine learning model directly within the data visualization project without going through the data flow process in previous lecture we had to create data flow to create target data set which included a predicted column in this lecture we'll look at alternative approach specifically geared towards the business use case like scenario modeling or what if analysis by directly applying a model on a data set within a visualization project so let's look at the demo okay so to do scenario modeling let's open our first project for bike rental prediction before we applied the machine learning model right so the project where we did data exploration and did explain just to understand data behavior right so this is the project we created earlier which includes the training data set and we created first canvas to look at the trend a couple of visualization and then we looked at the explain let's collapse this and add next data set which is the data we want to do prediction right in this case we are not building a data flow but we are simply adding a new data which does not have a bike rental count yet right so this is the data set where we want to actually predict for right so let's include that data set into our project once the data is inserted you can see there is a new new data set is added to our project one which is training data and the second one just got added is data for which we want to do prediction and in this data set we do not have a count so instead of going through the data flow process what i can do is i can simply right click on the data set and click on create scenario in this example it will automatically ask us which machine learning model you want to apply to this data set to create a scenario now let's select the one we just created and click okay and immediately you can see the prediction count is added to our data set now this is a very useful where you build multiple machine learning models and you want to create a different scenario and compare the results against the baseline right to identify which model is showing much better results from the prediction perspective besides looking at the scores and accuracy for the model itself in a visual manner you can create a multiple scenario and what if analysis if you had changed some parameter value if you had changed some additional data uh, attribute in your model how will it reflect in a visualization project so now we can go ahead and select count 
and the date and let's create a line chart again now the line chart is created for our prediction let's move it here so we can have comparison between our train data versus the scenario that we just created based on the machine learning model now this scenario is again based on july to december let's filter the training data for the same let's apply the filter from our training data let's select the range from july to december 2011 it's quite useful we have our baseline data we can create multiple scenario by leveraging multiple model and compare the results visually so th this concludes the topics around machine learning with oracle analytics in this section we covered how a business user and developer can take advantage of advanced analytics and machine learning framework to quickly build a predictive analytics as well as scenario modeling by leveraging the built-in machine learning algorithm thanks for joining in this lecture we'll look at the bonus demo in the next lecture in this lecture we will look at a demo of your bonus project predicting chronic kidney disease before we look at demo within oracle analytics environment let me just give you a way to read more about this particular demo and get all the artifacts if you are not familiar with oracle data visualization library yet this is a must have bookmark item to learn more about oracle data visualization in a search if you simply type oracle dv library most of the time the first link will take you to oracle analytics library if you click on examples on this page you will find machine learning approach to chronic kidney analysis example you can download the projects right from this page we are also including this project as a resource file for your bonus assignment you will find a link to a blog describing the process of applying machine learning and data science in a visualization environment and the blog link are also available as part of a resource i have already downloaded and imported the projects from data visualization library page let's open the project i want to highlight key component and the process of building such analysis let me hide the grammatical pane first on the left you have data set which includes the diagnostic data Data. This is research data available publicly which includes diagnostics of thousands of patients indicating blood pressure, sugar level in blood, the blood urea count and conditions whether the patient has a hypertension or diabetes or appetite problem and also indicate a class attribute whether the patient has a chronic kidney disease or not. Let me give more real estate to charts on the data exploration tab. We have created a few charts that help us understand various conditions and the distribution of the class attribute based on various parameters or various diagnostic measures. For example, how many positive class for a specific condition. So this is a heat map of positive versus negative condition by age group with hemoglobin level. This is exploration of data to understand various attributes and how the data distribution looks like. We can also do the data exploration using explain function. So based on the explain feature, some of the key attributes that really stand out are blood urea level, serum creatine level, hemoglobin level, as well as white blood cell level. One type of analysis that typically been done is is to understand obvious patterns and boundaries within the data. In this analysis, we build more advanced charts and visualization capability to find much deeper insights. So one of the charts quite useful is to understand the hemoglobin level versus blood pressure distribution, whether the combination of those diagnostic measure gives us a specific cluster. We can see that it's quite obvious there is a positive class cluster versus negative class cluster. So now we are started to understand lot more about data and the combination of metrics that might influence the condition. One of the important analysis before you build machine learning model is to really understand the correlation between the attribute. Within Oracle Analytics, we can very quickly build correlation metrics for a set of measures. Let me expand this so we can see the chart a little bit better. For example, creatine level and blood urea is highly positively correlated with almost 90% correlation, which indicates that we probably don't need a creatine as well as blood urea level in our data set to build our machine learning model. 
the heat map immediately gives us a volume the intensity of positive class the next obvious thing is to represent data for certain kind of condition and understand the boundaries so this could be an early indicator for a possible condition stop charts are basically an area chart highlighting the range of a matrix influencing the condition the chart below here are called sun key chart this is excellent way to represent the range as well as intensity now at this stage we already looked at quite a bit of visualization to understand data distribution correlation and clusters and then we looked at the boundaries and intensity of distribution for a particular matrix next step is obviously to create a machine learning model just like we did for bike rental case in this case we are going to use binary classification algorithm and there are multiple algorithms available for example logic Logistic regression, new bias, neural network, random forest, or even SVM. So like bike rental, here are some of the coefficient of linear regression versus SVM based uh, algorithm. This is not different from what we did with the bike rental, but just to give you an idea, there is a lot more goes in the approach of predictive analytics especially for real world use case. So hopefully it gives you a pretty good example of very comprehensive data visualization project that you can look at it as well as build it from scratch so feel free to download the project use the data set and try to build the similar visualization this concludes this section thank you for listening hello and welcome to section 6 this is the last section in this course in this section we will summarize some of the top 10 cool features that you should be aware of and worth learning about Oracle Analytics. In this section, next two lectures will talk about top 10 features divided into 5 visual experience features and 5 augmented or machine learning driven features that you should be aware of and worth exploring for stunning visual experience. We will also talk about upcoming exciting feature about natural language generation as well as we will end this section with highlighting some of the important resources for further learning. We are very excited to share a bonus project that was created for the Gartner Bake Off of 2019. Pretty exciting projects that talks about loneliness data and the factors that might influence or might contribute to loneliness. We hope you will enjoy that demo. Let's go to the next lecture. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about top 5 visual experience features that is worth knowing about Oracle Analytics. We have looked at these features and have done a lot of hands-on experience with all these features throughout the course. The first one is pattern brushing for quick data exploration. Pattern brushing is really a technique to help business users visually highlight the correlated data between the visualizations. The patterns are highlighted across the visual canvases. Pattern brushing help business users to keep focused on the context across visuals within the page. Another important feature that provides excellent visual experience is comprehensive data flow. It is a user-friendly, lightweight data manipulation and data blending tool. Not only it allows you to blend multiple data sets from all different kind of data sources, but it is visual experience to further enrich the data by applying sophisticated functions like aggregation, branching, training and applying machine learning model and create target data set for visual experience. Oracle Analytics comes with a very comprehensive expression builder. It allows to create calculated columns on the fly while you are working within visualization project. This allows business users to create their own comprehensive calculated formula with visual guidance through expression builder. It comes with built-in functions as well as ability to consume the data from your data sets in a calculation. For advanced developer and advanced business users, Expression Builder also provides flexibility to create custom definition of advanced analytics functions so that you can have a control on the parameters for a certain algorithm and help persist the usage of those custom definition in all segments of requirements. For a business user, it is not only about building visualization and discovering in hidden patterns and insight, but equally important is to meaningfully share and collaborate data discovery. 
The storytelling and collaboration features in Oracle Analytics allow business users to narrate their story, organize their hypothesis, create a narration pages, and present the story in a visually interactive presentation mode. Last but not least in a visual experience that governance and administration is important for developer as well as business users to share and collaborate the artifacts within Oracle Analytics environment. This platform makes it very easy for administrator, business user as well as developer to export and import visual projects, manage data set for sharing and collaboration as well as manage visual contents and folders in an organized way. These are just some of the top features that's worth knowing about to make the visual experience more productive. In next lecture, we will look at top 5 augmented features in Oracle Analytics. We'll see you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about top 5 augmented or machine learning driven visual experience features in Oracle Analytics. We looked at data enrichment with recommendation driven by machine learning framework. It is data profiling and data enrichment phase of your visual experience. Data preparation features automatically profiles the data set that you are bringing into Oracle Analytics environment and allows you to quickly enrich data set based on recommendation. Here are some of the cool aspect of machine learning driven data enrichment. It contains over 20 geographics and demographic enrichment libraries. It also recognizes over 30 semantic types to provide recommendation for your data set. Another very exciting machine learning driven feature is called explain for augmented insight. This is auto ML process to explain any attribute or measure and generate statistical insight and automatically create a visual that immediately highlights the hidden patterns and the statistics about the data. Explain really provides a quick way to start data visualization and avoid blank canvas syndrome. So when you bring in the data set, leveraging Explain can create a first data visualization page right away with much deeper insights and hidden patterns such as data distribution across various categories, the key drivers of the attribute or measure that you are trying to explain, identify segment as well as identify anomalies in the, in the data set. So explain gives a power of a one click auto ML functionality to business users to not only build visualization quickly but build it with statistical and deeper insights identifying hidden patterns. Another set of advanced analytics functions are available for business users are generating trend line or reference line or even advanced visualizations such as clusters and outliers. This one click advanced analytics features allows business user to consume commonly used statistical analysis without any specific programming. Besides one click explain and one click advanced analytics functions, Oracle Analytics also provide a very comprehensive machine learning framework in hands of business user. As a developer or business user, you can visually create a machine learning model and apply that model to do a predictive analysis. Business user can also leverage machine learning model in a visual projects to create a scenario and what if analysis Last but not least is a natural language processing within Oracle Analytics. It allows for a powerful intuitive search and ask capability and generate visualization automatically based on a user's query. The search capability interprets semantic layer using private data as well as expression library and the catalog artifacts to generate insights based on what user is asking. Query and search capability can do fuzzy matching, stemming, natural language processing, as well as generate on the fly visualization. Let's look at upcoming powerful feature of natural language generation. In previous slide, we looked at natural query processing, which takes the natural query, convert into semantic query and generate visualization. Natural language generation features automatically turns data into a plain language. So as users are building visualization, the natural language generation creates a narration of those visualization with the context. In this example, I'm simply creating a sales over the month and I'm going to add narration as just another chart type, which will start interpreting all the visualization on my page and start building a narration for me. Now this narration is not simply inter 
displaying what is on the chart but it also a like very context sensitive as we add filter as we add more element on the chart the narration is continuously adapting itself to provide more hidden data patterns and hidden data information in on those visualization it also structure the narration with the summary and the detailed context so user have a better view into how to interpret those narrated data this conclude this lecture
Hello, congratulations on completing this course. This is Jignesh Mehta and Subhrat Dutta. We sincerely thank you for joining with us for this course. We hope you enjoyed learning about machine learning as well as augmented analytics with Oracle Analytics platform. Please feel free to provide us feedback and comments in the course comment section or Q&A section. We look forward to seeing you in another course soon. Meanwhile, enjoy working with Oracle Analytics and make sure to look at all the assignments and bonus projects to get deeper insights into Oracle Analytics platform. Thank you again and we'll see you soon.